We're talking about the meaning of life, why we're all here on this earth. And we've been studying especially the explanation of the only human being who has ever got off this world and come back to tell us what is out there. That is beyond our own spacemen who, relatively speaking, have pierced into space a very small distance. But this man that we're talking about give the kind of evidence that intelligent minds respect for believing that he actually did go beyond this earth and beyond the farthest limits of space and did in fact communicate with the supreme being who has made our universe. And of course, he's the man Jesus of Nazareth. And we're studying the explanation he's giving us of our present lives. And, of course, what appeals to the common sense is that what he says matches our own experience. For instance, he does say that we are just born of the flesh, and flesh will never inherit the kingdom of God. And whether you believe in a heavenly kingdom of God or whether you believe in a God at all or not, you know fine well that you have inside you ideas of a kind of kingdom of God or a heavenly existence that you feel you were made for. And you know fine well that it is true what this man says, that we never seem able to inherit that kingdom with just the aptitudes and the abilities and capacities that we have at present. For instance... Do you ever get enough love? Do you? Now, I know it depends on what you mean by love, whether you mean lust or excitement or thrill or whether it means appreciation or acknowledgement, but whatever it means, do you ever get enough of it? And you probably answer like the most of us, no, no, I don't. Have you ever enough uh, security? And probably like even Rockefeller, you always say, no, no, I just need another million. Or you'll answer, look, I don't talk in terms of millions, I just need another pound. No, I never do seem to get enough security. Do you ever get enough uh, sense of your own value and worth in other people's eyes? And you'd probably admit, no, no, they don't seem to recognize the remarkable person I am, and they don't seem to appreciate me all the time. Do you ever get enough happiness? And you'd probably say, well, no, I, a lot of the times I'm kind of depressed and sad and worried and anxious. No, I certainly don't. And what Jesus said was, you see, all those needs that you have, you're trying to meet them from the things, from getting things. I mean, you try to build up stocks and shares. You try to build up insurance policies. You try to build up equity in your home to ensure security for yourself. And it's not actually security you need. Security is a byproduct of something else, and that's what you need. It's the same, he says, with a sense of importance or self-worth or self-esteem or a sense of identity or significance. You know, this popular question we're all supposed to ask, who am I, who am I? Well, the answer to that question does not come from getting all the people you can to think you're the greatest thing in the world or you're the guy in the big picture. That will never give you enough self-worth or enough self-esteem. That is a byproduct of something else that you need. And Jesus said the same thing about happiness. I mean, you try to get a better vacation next year than you had this year. You think if you went at a different time, maybe you'd be happier. Or you think if you meant, went with some other people, you'd be happier. Or if your wife would only behave this way, you'd be happier. If your children would only do this, you'd be happier. But really, happiness is not what you need. It's a byproduct of something else. And of course, what Jesus said was, what you really need is love. And, of course, you may say, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, but they, my wife won't love me enough, my girlfriend won't love me enough, my friends won't love me enough, that's it, I can't get enough love. Yes, but Jesus said, it's not their love. I mean, their love is very limited. Their love won't give you security, for instance. It doesn't matter if they're millionaires. Finally, they can't make you secure from cancer. It doesn't matter if they're the happiest people in the world. Finally, they can't make you completely and absolutely happy. It doesn't matter if they're the most important people in your town. They can't give you enough sense of your own worth. 
the only one who can give you enough sense of worth, who can give you all the happiness you need, the only one who can give you absolute security is one who has infinite resources. And that's actually the person whose love you were made for. You were made for the love, Jesus said, of my own father who begot me. He's the one that made you. He's the supreme being, the creator, the maker of the whole universe. And you're actually made for his love. And I know you'll think to yourself, wait a minute. I mean, I'm a little fly on this earth. I'm a nothing. And you tell me the creator of the universe whom I have trouble even believing in actually loves me? Yep, that's right. That's right. Here's what Jesus said. He said, even the hairs of your head are numbered. My father has numbered the hairs of your head. You remember he said, we quoted it last week, don't be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink or about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than body and food? Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. Look at the flowers of the field. They toil not, neither do they sow. And yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of much more value than they? And Jesus assured us, yeah, you are not just a miniature little cipher in this world. You are not just a consumer. You are not just a statistic. You are not just a little fly on the world's surface. You are someone that your creator has made unique. There's nobody like you. Never ever will be anybody like you and never has been anybody like you. Your father, the creator, has made you because he loves you. That's why he's made you. That's why you exist. If you say, no, no, it couldn't be, you reflect for a moment. What's the most precious thing in life? You know it's not things. You know it's not circumstances that are good. You know it's not uh, people talking well of you. It's love, love, personal relationship. That's what is dearest to you about your wife or your friend or your father or your mother. It's the personal relationship. It doesn't matter what they possess or what they don't possess. If you have a real relationship with somebody, that is dear. That's the thing that never bores friendship, a good friendship never bores. The love of a person for you is something that is the dearest thing in the whole universe. That's so with God, our Father. He made you because he loves you and he wants you for his friend. That's it. He wants you to be his friend. Jesus explained that to one of his disciples. And this disciple wrote it in a letter that he sent to some people in the first century. And he was called John. And he wrote three little letters that you find in our Bible in the New Testament near the back of it. And in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 3, he said, So that you may have fellowship or friendship with us. And our friendship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That's it. God the supreme being of the whole universe does not delight primarily in Mars or Venus or Jupiter or the Milky Way. He does not primarily de de delight in the DNA molecule. He does not primarily delight in protons and neutrons. He doesn't even primarily delight in the theory of relativity or the Ural Mountains or the Apennines. He doesn't primarily de delight in the Rocky Mountains or the Mississippi. He delights primarily in you. He wants friends who love him freely and who enjoy his company. That's why you were made. That's why the Father made you. Jesus says, that's what will satisfy you. When you begin to realize that, and begin to live in the reality of that. That's the purpose of 